Hi there guys, welcome back to another c -sharp tutorial. In the last tutorial we talked about classes, how we defined one, and how we can add members uh, or variables to it, and how to define methods. We created uh, a person class here, as you can see, a person class, and we added two members, which is a uh, person name and name and add the two methods to simplify our work on for printing the data, the name and age, and one for reading the data. So far so good. Today uh, we will work with constructors. Okay, uh, in some cases you want to um, initialize the class or uh, uh, initialize the objects that are created of a specific class type as, uh, as soon as you create them. Okay, so uh, let's see how to do that. Uh, to give you an idea what we are trying to do here, we are going to do the following. Instead of reading the name from the screen, we will say uh, p1.person name equals Smith and p1 dot age equal 30 okay uh, and so far this is uh, easy and straightforward right so uh, we are gonna run this and see how it work and it works no problem there now we are gonna change this a little bit and give an age of 900 to Smith and it's still working uh, in terms of writing uh, in terms of uh, syntax of the language syntax this is correct however logically this should never happen you are not supposed to enter an aid of 900 to a person this is obviously wrong so we, we are gonna write a constructor that will initialize the object with a name and an age, and we will also uh, va uh, validate that age. How we are going to do that? Well, basically, a constructor is a function, a special type of function, that uh, actually has the same name of the class. So, in this case, we are going to say person class, open a bracket, we're going to say string. Uh, P name and uh, int age. So far, so good. Now, uh, you can see we didn't return any value here. And next, we are going to do the following we should say person name equal P name and the starter, we are going to say age equal age. We didn't add any validation. Now, uh, why this definition is different from the others? You can see there's a keyword here. Uh, there's a term data type. The uh, constructor doesn't return any data type. However, uh, they uh, are executed directly as soon as you create an object. So before we're running anything, you can see the compiler gave us an error right away here. Why? Because the constructor over here requires two parameters, a name and an age. And we didn't provide these parameters here. So what are we going to do? You can see here it's expecting a string p name and an int age. The compiler understands what uh, we are supposed to fill here. So we are going to say Smith and 900 again. Uh, okay. One other thing that I forgot to write here, which is, uh, wait a second, I'm going here, if I'm not mistaken, I forgot the public keyword, we'll get into the public later on, but for now, okay, so you can see here, what does this uh, line of code mean, it means to create an object of type person, and initialize the name to Smith, and the age to 900. 
So far we didn't do anything special, we just filled the members with variables. Uh, and that's it. We didn't do anything special at all. So we are, when we are running this, you can see Smith 900. Now we are going to make things a little bit more, uh, what do you call it, useful uh, when using the constructor. We are going to add this. F age. Um, let's say it's greater than 100. In that case, we are going to assume that there is an error. So we're going to say um, here, for example, we can um, system console right line. Right line, for example. A person's age can't be over, sorry, 100. Okay. And it will still executing the code. So now I'm going to run this again. You can see a person's age can't uh, be over 100. Okay. So we could print this, or actually, we could do something different. I'm going to say through a new exception and pass this message here. So I'm going to run the code now. Uh, exceptions are a way, or uh, uh, this statement over here will, will create an error in the program. So if you pass a value over 100, you will get an error. So here, I'm going to run this. And You can see here the compiler stopped at this statement, and you can see a person age can be over 100. Oh, sorry, over 100, as you can see. So, in a way, we added a form of check on the data being passed to the object in the constructor. Okay, now the question is do we have to do this kind of uh, stuff in the constructor always? Well, no. Uh, I just added this as an example to show you when the code of the constructor is being executed. The code is executed as soon as the object is being created. Okay. Uh, now um, I'm gonna uh, run this code again in debug mode uh, to show you what is happening step by step. Right. So here uh, I'm gonna go debug and yeah. I've done, there we go, where's the step into, there we go, and now we're going to create the object, check and have a look, you can see now the compiler went, or the program went to the person class, the constructor, here, and these are the parameters, and it's going to execute this one, execute this one, execute this one, and so on. Now the important part here, we don't have to focus on the throw exception here or this form of validation. What we are, what you are supposed to focus on, is that this code is being executed as soon as the object is being created. This is the important part. Okay. So um, uh, and then the value is being printed over here. Now. So as you can see from its name, a constructor is used to construct an object to initialize its variable and its variables and members. Uh, this is why it's being used and this is why it's being uh, called a constructor. And it is always being executed uh, as soon as the object is created. Now, one of the things that you might find interesting is that you could have multiple types of constructor. So um, here I'm going to uh, just cancel these lines of this validation. And now I'm going to create another constructor here. Public person class string uh, name. There we go. So now this is a diff another constructor. A class could have multiple constructors. Okay. So, uh, sorry. I'm going to say person name equals name. What about the age? I'm going to assume the age equals um, let's say zero. Okay? So 
So in this case, we, we created um, a constructor that will uh, initialize one variable only. We can do that if it makes sense. In our case, we assume it makes sense. So here we're going to say person class p2 equals a new person class. And here we have Todd. And you can see the compiler accept that. So you can see that we have uh, we are creating two objects. Once we pass two parameters, another time we pass uh, one parameter. So here p2 dot print. There we go. And now we are going to run this code. You can see Todd is zero. Smith eight is zero. Um, wait a second. We uh, wait a second. I should have. Yeah, it was a bug. Now it's fixed. Now you can see it's working. Now we're going to debug this one again. So I just want you to see the code being executed. So step into here. Now um, we run. Uh, now we have two parameters. The compiler will use the number of parameters and the data types to identify which function to call. In this case, sorry, I have to move this down a little bit. Okay, there we go. So, it's going to execute this one, execute this, this, and this. First constructor uh, uh, has finished, and now uh, it's going to print. And the first object is being printed. Next, we are initializing the second uh, object. One parameter, so the compiler will choose the function that needs one parameter of type string. So it goes here and uh, apply the initialization, and this is done, as you can see. Okay, and so on. Well, Another question might be wondering, well, what if I don't want to initialize a class right away? I just want to create an object and read the data from the screen. So, previously we wrote something like this, p3 equal new person class, we open a bracket, close it, and that's it. Right? However, now we are getting an error. Why is that? Well, we get this because we created constructors, and uh, when we create constructors, the compiler must match uh, the uh, this part here, this part here must be matched with the available constructors. So you can see this one needs one parameter, this one needs two parameters. However, there isn't one that uh, doesn't take any parameter. So what do we do? Well, we just create a constructor that doesn't take any parameter and doesn't do anything. Now, if we go back to the code, we can see it now. It's the compiler doesn't object at all. So now p3.read and p3.print. Okay, next we are gonna run this and see how it goes. So now name uh, Michael 33. You can see Michael and 33. Okay, so what we uh, what we have learned so far is to have to define a class, how we can uh, create different type of uh, uh, variables. So in this case, we have string and an integer. How we can create methods, uh, uh, for example, print and read. How these methods access the variables. And today we learned how to uh, define multiple types of constructors. Uh, for example, this one this one and this one is taking different types of parameters and how we can uh, use any constructor uh, when we define our or create our object. Uh, one last thing, how many constructor should you create? Well, it depends on your case. Some cases you don't need to have any constructor. Some cases you might need one. Some cases you might need 20. It all depends. Okay? Uh, in, uh, in our generic example, we used three. Why three? Because we are just trying to illustrate things. Uh, however, in some cases, for example, if you are creating a class for handling complex numbers, you might need a constructor that uh, that receives two parameters, one for read, one for imaginary, and so on. So it uh, really depends on the case and depends on your design. Okay.
uh, that I guess this will be all about constructors. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll have more about classes uh, tomorrow. Uh, have a nice day. Bye bye.